in the C8, it had to be an incredible feeling at the time. Oh, yeah. Breaking the record, right? When I bought that car, there's video of it somewhere. I said I was going to leave it stock. <laughs> I never... <laughs> I I believed it when I said it too that I wasn't going to modify this car and I bought it as a customer two years ago I was calling dealerships trying to just get my name on on the wait list for one and I you know I had no idea you know Chevrolet had no idea what I was going to do with this car I know they believed in me from the beginning but you know it was it was very unreal and when I bought that car initially um I drove straight from Kentucky uh, to the West Coast and ended up stopping in Texas on the way to put a nitrous bottle on the car, go to the drag strip wow. to see if we could break what was the, the record at the time, which was actually really tangible because I'd gotten one of the, the first cars in America. Um, and I, we didn't break the record. We were like a few tenths of a second off, but I just got hooked. And I was like, all right, what are we doing next? We're going to twin turbo this car. We're going to try to figure out a tuning solution. And we're going to go out there. We're going to keep pushing. And we ended down this, this rabbit hole of, of C8 Corvette and constantly trying to push the boundaries of this car with an encrypted ECU that you can't tune um, and trying to, you know, find ways to trick the sensors and make the car happy. And, and <laughs> yeah, I got... A lot of people were stoked I actually kept the car because a lot of YouTubers ended up and, and builders in general ended up selling the the car because it was um, it was locked. Uh, so I know I stuck with it. It's one of my favorite cars today and and we're still working on going back out there recently. The record um, I had held the record for about six months. Someone recently had taken that from me and, you know, I'm stoked for it because I was like, man, I, you know, it, it's fun when there's friendly competition. You know, I don't see this as cutthroat. I'm, we're behind the scenes. We're all helping one another. Like, oh, you did this. Well, we did this. And some people find different tuning solutions that work for them. And we're constantly in the background trying to help one another. So when they, when someone else breaks the record, it's like awesome because now we know that the platform's even more capable than what we thought it was, which only continues to push and drive us to try to get better and do better. It, it, the automotive world in in that space is such an evolutionary thing, right? There, you never stop learning what you can do to these yeah. products. And I'm guessing that's something you didn't anticipate when you first got into it. Not at all. And a lot of people tell me they're surprised, we'll say, that I know so much about cars that I do, but I don't feel like I know that much because there's so much out there. Every day I'm learning new so much things. To learn. There's so much to learn. It's, you know, and I think that's why I've stuck with cars as long as I have, because if I'm not learning, constantly learning, I get bored of things. And there's never been a day where I'm not learning something when I'm working on a car. <laughs> 